do the same with Kita. Five short stories by a seven-year-old. The Magical Cupboard, Alien Friend, The Talking Tree, Extinct Animal World, written by Anna Jane. Let's take a look. Five short stories by a seven-year-old, written by Anna Jane. Anna Jane is a seven-year-old young writer who lives in Dubai. This is her second book as an author. She loves to write stories that have beautiful settings, mysterious and surprising characters, wonderful animals and birds, magical castles and a lot of other things. She believes that we as humans need to take care of all our plants, animals and nature. She loves reading, writing, music and exploring new places in this beautiful world. Please encourage this young writer by leaving your feedback at Facebook at litter.adventure, Instagram at litter.adventure and Goodreads www.goodreads.com backslash Anna25 Content 1. Extinct Animal World 2. A Girl with Magical Cupboard 3. The Talking Tree 4. An Extraordinary Plot 5. An Alien Friend Extinct Animal World Are you ready? Some Extinct Animals West African Rhinoceros Baiji White Dolphin, Pyrenean Ibex, Passenger Pigeon, Tasmanian Tiger, Stella's Sea Cow, Great Orc, Dodo, Woolly Mammoth, Sabre Toothed Cat. There was once a little girl who smelled like leaves, always had beautiful flowers in her hair and she was always ready to explore and was very active. She really liked nature and went to explore nature every day. She would check the trees, smell the leaves, which smelt like daisies, and sometimes would taste new fruits. She really loved nature, you see, so every day when her father read out the newspaper she always felt worried about all the extinct animals her parents used to call her little tree because she loved trees and nature very much so one day when they went for a picnic she climbed up a tree and when she got to the top branch she saw a whole new world from there it was the extinct animal world she could see a lot of extinct animals playing together she wanted to really go to this beautiful wonderful world then suddenly next to her she saw a rocket how did this rocket come here she thought with a very surprised face the rocket had a sign that read, Rocket to Extinct Animal World. Little Tree got on the rocket and switched it on. The rocket zoomed and blasted and it flew to the extinct animal world. Once it reached, the little girl climbed out of the rocket. There were so many extinct animals like her father had read every day. She thought, when animals are extinct from the earth, they must be coming to this place. The extinct animal world had trees that had lots of extinct birds, like passenger pigeons and toucans. There were beautiful daisies, orchids and tulips that smelled like cherries and bananas. There was even a wonderful school where extinct animals could learn about a lot of things. There was even a play area for all extinct animals to go play and have fun. 
In this play area, they would meet after school and have all kinds of things like tea parties, they played at swings, you see. It was very wonderful. The play area smelt like all kinds of fruit and tasted like all kinds of chocolates, which Little Tree really loved. Little Tree really loved looking at the animals playing in the play area. Then, suddenly, the animals saw her. Yay! Now I can play with all these extinct animals, thought Little Tree. The animals saw the girl and they suddenly got very frightened and scared. Little Tree told them softly, Don't worry, I will not pollute your beautiful world. I just want to play with you. The animals cheered up. <laughs> A big woolly mammoth came and one of the baby dolphins said, This is the president of the extinct animal world. The woolly mammoth was wearing a crown and asked the animals, Why did you invite this girl? His voice boomed through the whole extinct animal world. Sir, don't worry, said one of the baby dolphins. This little girl is friendly and she said that she just wants to play with us and not pollute our world. Yeah, said one of the armor leopards, another extinct animal. She is great to play with. Thanks, guys, Little Tree said. Could you do just one thing? She paused for a second and then said to Armor Leopard, Could you show me around? Uh, for sure, said Armor Leopard. So, the whole gang started showing around the little girl. They showed her the extinct animal school, playground and play area. There were lots of other animals like lots of species of seagulls and lots of two tusks woolly mammoth. The little girl felt that the place was beautiful. Then, a beautiful butterfly came up and said, Do you have any family? Yes said the little girl. Could you bring them also? asked another Amor leopard. Of course, <laughs> said the little girl. I will be back in a sec. She got back into the rocket and reached to her family. She told them about the exciting adventure. Her mom and dad were bewildered. Then the little girl said, could you please come with me to this extinct animal world? Of course, said her father. We also want to see all these extinct animals. The little girl showed them the rocket and then they all took off. The extinct animals were waiting and they were very happy to see her back with her family. Like the girl, her family also saw around this wonderful world. They were amazed by it. They really loved the park and they also visited the zoo to see some dangerous extinct animals. When they all were having a lot of fun, suddenly a loud bell rang and they saw a nasty human being coming with fire. He was putting fire in houses. Fire, fire, shouted a more leopard and beige a dolphin. Little Tree felt very scared and worried. Then, suddenly, Little Tree had an idea. She knew she could maximise the size of the rocket to a super huge rocket. Everybody, come into the rocket, she shouted. Everybody came into the rocket and they zoomed blast. At least that was a good rescue. But now, where will we live? said the woolly mammoth. Wait a minute, let me think, said Little Tree. By the time the whole world knew that humans destroyed the extinct animal world and now we need to give some space to extinct animals, 
Literary decided to build a new home for all the extinct animals on Earth. Her grandma had given her a magical locket, and using that, she could make a new home and new world. She opened her magical locket and said very firmly, "I want a new home and a new world for all extinct animals, which humans cannot destroy." The locket created a new world for extinct animals, which was again very beautiful and wonderful. <laughs> She said to all her extinct animal friends, "Come on, guys! We have a new world for you. Let's explore it." Everyone went in to explore the new world, and they really loved it. All the animals thanked her. Woolly Mammoth gave her a little letter that said. Every time you want to come here, just wish with this letter in your hand, and you will be here. Little tree then went back home. It had been a very adventurous day. She looked at her locket and the letter, and said, "I wish I could go back to animal worlds." Suddenly. There was a whooshing sound, and little tree was back in the extinct animal world. The animals were all very happy to see her back. Little tree gave a big hug to Woolly Mammoth, and she felt that we should make this world a better world every day. A beautiful girl with a magical cupboard. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who had silvery eyes, golden hair, and had glowing cheeks, which was like magic. She was seven years old, and she lived in a city in Thailand. She lived with her little brother and her parents. She had a beautiful room with all her toys, an exciting bed, and a wonderful desk. It was the time of coronavirus, and even it was her holiday. One day, she opened her magical cupboard, which kept all of her secrets and wishes. She opened it, hoping that it'll grant one of her wishes, and stepped inside, and there was glistening magic. Suddenly, the wish-granting tornado came and swept the girl. In five seconds, she landed in an enchanted forest. She looked up and saw a magnificent castle. Wow! She exclaimed. The little girl found a rope hanging from the castle. She pulled it, and suddenly, from the middle of the castle, a gate opened. Yay! Now I can go on and explore. The little girl cheered. The door returned to their place with a slam, and the girl hid in the bushes in case anybody was out. After some time, she saw a fierce, strong-looking dragon which had a long, fiery flame and was talking to two knights. One knight had an oval, stretchy face, cube eyes, a potato nose. His skin smelled like flowers, and he was wearing a golden suit armor. There was another knight who had a cube face, narrow eyes, long, stretchy nose. His skin prickled in the sunshine, and he was wearing a silver armor suit. The dragon was telling the knights something when the girl stepped out of the blush to speak with the dragon. Excuse me, Mister Dragon, is this the way to the castle? The girl asked. The dragon turned around and roared, "If you want to come into the castle, you must first tell the password." Of course, the girl didn't know the password, but the knights helped her. The golden knight sang, one to five. In the silver knight sang, do re mi fa sol. The dragon glared at them. 
Why did you guys give her clues? He demanded furiously. Then the girl started to sing the password. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And immediately she started to sing the next song. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Suddenly the dragon fell asleep. <sighs> Great, now I can explore, said the little girl. The knights opened the gates and let her in. The girl went inside the castle and it was beautiful. There was a beautiful dressing table, awesome dresses, lovely tables covered in the pink and white tablecloth and lots of yummy food. Then a big gong rang. That's the lunchtime bell, said the silver knight. The king and the queen will be here soon with the prince and princess. Do you want to wear something beautiful? asked the silver knight. Yes, please, said the little girl. The golden knight brought a beautiful dress that was her size. She wore it and then sat at the dinner table waiting and thinking what the king, queen, prince and princess would be like. Then a woman appeared with a beautiful shimmering gown. She had pale skin and she was wearing a beautiful dress. Later came the king, who was wearing a big crown. He had a long beard, curly hair, and his skin crackled and freckled, and red light was shining from his crown. After that, the princess came with a beautiful wedding hat, and she was wearing a beautiful white wedding gown. She had flowers in her hand. Then came along a young man, he had a coat and some things on it which were like badges and he was also wearing a crown. The princess's eyes met the girl. Hello, I am Princess Louisa, the princess said and this is Prince Johnny. Hi, said the little girl. I am Elisa. Today we are having a wedding, the princess said, and you are going to be our first guest. The queen said that after lunch we will be having a wedding. Then they all started to eat. Everybody was hungry, even Elisa. So Elisa, where did you come from? Princess Louisa asked. I came from my cupboard. I wanted to go to a magical castle and I asked for a wish. So it granted my wish, said Alisa. Woohoo! A magical cupboard which can grant secret wishes must be great. You must be very lucky, Alisa, said Prince Johnny. By then, everybody had finished lunch. Now, let's get ready for the wedding before the guests arrive, said the king. Elisa, would you like to be the flower girl? The queen asked. Yes, I would love to, said Elisa. Then Elisa got ready, and so did everyone. Slowly, guests arrived, and then the wedding started. It was a wonderful wedding, and everyone enjoyed the party. I wish I could come here every year on your anniversary, said Alisa to Prince Johnny and Princess Louisa. <laughs> Prince Johnny laughed and said, Well, Alisa, you can put this in the cupboard and gave her a small pouch. This is for you to check how we are doing, said Princess Louisa. Goodbye, said Princess Louisa. Bye, said Alisa. When she stepped out, she saw the wish-granting tornado was waiting for her. She stepped inside it, and in about ten seconds, she got back into her normal room.
she found her dad calling her. Alisa, help me set up the table for evening snack," said her dad. "Coming," Alisa replied. Then she opened the pouch, and there was a magical locket in it. With the locket, she could talk to Prince and Princess, or message them. She went to type a message in the locket and typed, "Best wishes to you, Princess Louisa and Prince Johnny. I got to go. Bye bye." <laughs> the talking tree. I was once walking through the forest full of trees and exciting animals when I spotted a tree. It was no ordinary tree. It was a live tree because it had eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. It wasn't a still-standing tree. It had light brown roots and dark and colorful branches. It had daisies. And its leaves were smelling like roses. Hmm. <sighs> Suddenly, when I was about to take another path, this tree started to talk. It said, "Hello. I am so glad to see you, because I have animal friends, other fruit tree friends, and flower tree friends, but I don't have many human friends." I was so happy to meet this talking tree, and I asked him more about his friends. My best friends, when I go to the tree school, are the mango trees, peach trees, and the daisy trees. The tree got a bit sad for a while. He told me that some humans had removed his friend tree to make roads. It wanted trees and humans to be friends and to help each other. I also felt sad when I heard what the tree said. Then I asked him if he goes to school with his friends. Trees go to. Tree school to learn about important trees and have fun. Said the talking tree. Our school is made of hard mashed apple bricks and smells like bananas. Said the tree. The tree continued talking with me and said, "I really love how I always play with the animals in the evening time." Then suddenly it popped out its four fast, short, dangly legs and started to run. The wind was strong, but it managed to run. What a fast tree! <laughs> I said to myself. There was a strong wind, and it tasted like cherries as we were running. Then we reached inside the forest, where many animals were playing. There were deer, tigers, koalas, and foxes, and they all played together. And the tree also started playing with them. They played many games like tag, hide and seek, and so much fun. When it was late, the tree said goodbye to its friends, and then everyone went home. What an extraordinary tree! <laughs> I thought, and wondered what it will do next. Next, the tree started to talk with its best friends from school. Hey, do you know a fact? The tree asked the daisy tree. I know all of the facts, said the daisy tree. Do you know which is the most famous tree in the world? Asked the tree. Mega Doodle Tree, the daisy tree answered. They talked for some time and they said goodbye. Okay, so now. What is this tree going to do next? I thought. It was night, so I took out my sleeping bag to sleep underneath the stars, and the tree became a still tree. 
The next day I got up in the morning and the tree was a talking tree again. I was amazed by this. It was 6am and the tree was going to tree school. Now, what is it going to do at the tree school? By the way, this is an extraordinary adventure, I thought. La 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 la, I heard the trees singing while it was getting ready for the tree school. I packed my sleeping bag and got ready too. Hey, do you want to see my school? The tree asked. Yes, of course, <laughs> I would love to see your school. I replied. Then I followed the talking tree through the deep dark woods, but the sun was shining so I wasn't afraid. Soon we reached the tree school. The tree school was exactly like the tree had said. It was made of hard apple bricks and smelled like bananas. <laughs> The tree went in, but the door swung too fast and closed, so I couldn't get in. I was waiting to see if the door opens again, and then I saw a little window. My little brother had taught me to do monkey climbing, so I climbed like a monkey and got in. It was a bit dusty, so I sneezed once or twice. Soon I found my tree friend, but he didn't see me. I kept looking into the class from the window. The teacher said, Good morning, class. And the children even said good morning to their teacher. Then the tree teacher started the lesson. They were learning about the interesting rainforest and the wonderful animals that live there. Finally, it was home time and I went back with the tree. I wondered, really, what in the world it'll do next. As I unlocked my diary to write about the adventure, I heard and saw the tree doing exercise and it was huffing and puffing. Soon the dinner time bell rang and we all ate dinner. After that, I slept under the beautiful stars. I got up the next day and started packing. Since my holiday was over, I had to go back home. I said goodbye to my tree friend and hopped on my bicycle to return home. I was very eager to reach home as I had to tell the whole story to my parents and ask them how we as humans can become good friends with trees. My parents were very surprised when I said that I found a talking tree. They listened to my full story and got sad when I told them how some trees were removed by humans. They told me to always love trees, give them water and grow as many new trees as I could. While I was having lunch, I wrote my extraordinary adventure in my secret diary and it's going to be my secret forever. <laughs> An extraordinary plot. One day I was playing in my garden when suddenly a tornado came right towards me. I tried to dodge out, but wherever I went it followed me. Then I stopped. I realised that it was a magical tornado not the one which comes from Tornado Alley. So I let it come to me. It came and swept me up, swirling back in the air. A shrinking machine was there and it made me small. I landed with a thud in an enchanted forest. I realised that it was a magical forest which had many pretty flowers and a gorgeous atmosphere. Then an orange, white-striped fox, the same size as I, came with a letter in his collar. This fox could talk, so it came to me and said, Please take this note, which my friend Superhero Super gave me. I was amazed to meet this fox, so I took the note from him and sat in the shade with the fox. 
I tore open the envelope and started reading it. Dear Anna, I was trying to rescue some bunnies from a villain when the villain, the scary spider, came with the bunnies poisonous food. When the scary spider saw me, it roared and demanded, Who are you? How did you get in here? I calmly answered, I came here to save the bunnies and my animal pet friend Foxer the fox. Help me move the boulders covering your cave. Then the spider said, I am going to put you and your fox in a jail. God, put him into jail and find his friend Fox. Wa <laughs> said the spider. I was taken to jail by two mean guards. I was worried if Foxer will be found. Luckily, he went into the forest next to the scary spider's cave and hid in the trees. I was relieved when Foxer called me and told me that he was safe in the forest trees. I even told him that I was in the scary spider's jail cellar. Then, an idea. Dear popped into my head. Foxer, are you still here? I asked quietly, hoping the scary spider won't hear me. Yes, Foxer said. After that, I told him, I am going to send a letter to Anna and I will call her by my magical tornado. I will shrink you because she will also be shrunk so that none sees you both. When I told the scary spider that I am asking Anna to come, he roared and said, I bet she will not come because I am casting a spell to put an obstacle course in her way. Thanks. I hope to see you soon. Superhero. Super. P.S. I have put in some hints in the obstacle course which the scary spider has put. Fox the Fox asked anxiously, Will you go and save Superhero and Super and the bunnies? Yes, I said boldly and started to walk with Foxer. I found some footprints which Superhero Super had put for me to find my way. I followed it and then found the obstacle course. There was a dinosaur who was chewing loudly. Crunch, 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 roar. Then I found the note which Fox the Fox had brought. It read, Tip, there are some bunny cages on the tight rope. Go across the tight rope halfway and you will find them. You will also find a superhero watch in bunny cages. Tell the watch, make Foxer normal size again. Then tell Foxer to push you down and you will slide quietly to the ground. OK, I can do this, I said to myself and started to climb the ladder to reach the tightrope. When I looked up from the first step of the ladder, I thought, gosh, this is super high. But then Foxer suddenly made his tail super long using his secret bow tie. He then helped me climb the ladder using his long tail. Finally, after 20 minutes, we got to the top. I went across the tightrope since I was wearing my bicycle shoes I was able to stand on the tight rope. Even though I was litter sized, I managed to get halfway in ten minutes. I got the watch and said, Make Fox a normal size. Suddenly, Fox became normal sized. I went inside the bunny cages and then, from another door of the cage, I went inside other cages. It was like a train. Then, quietly, Foxer pushed the cages and the cages started to swing at full speed. 
Whee! I cried, but nobody could hear me since I was very small. I slipped down the slide, which was half broken, and then started to slide down the dinosaur tail. Fox landed from the tight rope to the ground. Since I had the watch with me, I told the watch, Make Fox a small size again. And Fox became small size again. So we started to go to the next obstacle course. The tip for the next obstacle says, The next obstacle course will be with a hoop. There will be a slide on which you could go up and down to reach the hoop. You have to go to the top of the hoop and you will need to steer it to roll it to the other side of the grass. If a dinosaur sees you, you throw some grass from the grass bag and say, Here you go, dino. The dino will get distracted and will start eating it. Magically, with a whisk of air, we were sitting on the hoop. Woohoo! That was quick, I said. I started to steer the hoop. Suddenly, a dinosaur saw us. Here you go, dinosaur, Foxer called and threw some bits of grass. The dinosaur got distracted and started eating it. I quickly steered the hoop to the other side where the slide was. Finally, the last obstacle course was a balancing beam. Since I was so small, I decided to become human-sized and then do the beam. I took out the watch and said, Watch, make us human-sized again. We magically became human-sized again. <laughs> With our normal size, I and Foxer easily walked on the balance beam. Finally, we came to the scary spider's cave. We tiptoed inside since the boulders were light and easy to move. We found Superhero Super in the jail cellar and the bunnies stuck in the net. Don't worry, I whispered. I have brought the bunny cages. Together, I and Foxer moved the bunnies into bunny cages. With Foxer's new gadget, it could remove the ogooyi oh, things stuck to the bunnies. Finally, I took out from my bag a key for the scary spider's jail cellar. As quickly as you can, say abracadabra. We unlocked Superhero from the jail cell. Superhero Super said, Thank you! Suddenly a loud roar came. It was the scary spider. He demanded, How dare you to come here? His voice shrieked. I made a dangerous obstacle course and you passed it. I will teach you a lesson that you will never forget. He said. He started firing ooey gooey netballs at us, but we managed to dodge them out. Superhero Super said, This is the time for my new gadget. And he took out some launchers. He started putting the ooey gooey netballs in launchers, and once they were full, he started shooting them on the spider. I went all over his body. Aha! The scary spider cried and then fell into some of his own ooey-gooey netballs. <laughs> Since his face was stuck in the ooey-gooey netballs, it smelled disgusting and he couldn't see where we were going. We quickly ran out and then shut the door with heavy bulldozers so that he won't be able to come out ever again. Thank you, Anna, for rescuing me and bunnies from the scary spider. You must go home now, said Superhero Super. Yes, I said. Thanks for the fun adventure, everyone. I hope to see you soon. With that, I whisked away in the magical tornado which I came in.
I landed back in my garden and I thought about the fun adventure. An alien friend. La 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 la! I sang as I got up. It was a fantastic Friday during my holidays. Suddenly I heard a beat. Click, clack, click, clack. It was coming from the backyard. The backyard was a beautiful place where there were lovely tulips, pretty daisies, big green trees with a dark brown coat, small plants with huge leaves, and a little water play area where Arav and I would play during summer. We had water splinters with which the plants would get water and there were even swings so we can play in the sun. There were insects and gorgeous oxygen from the plants. I can see oxygen with my spy glasses and saw so it was gorgeous. We had a garden with pretty flowers, buckets and watering cans to water the plants. We even had one field with two types of grasses. One side had tall grass and the other side had fake grass to play all kinds of sports. We used to play a lot of games in our garden like hide and seek, tag, etc. We had a lot of small animal and insect friends like ladybugs and grasshoppers. Sometimes I and Arav would also play with our animal and insect friends. We would count and insects would hide and then we would find them. I initially thought that it was one of my animal or insect friends that have made the click clack sound. I decided to ask them and also see if they wanted to play hide and seek. I made my bed, changed my clothes, brushed my teeth and ate breakfast before going to the backyard. I asked my animal and insect friends about the sound, but it was not one of them. Eee! I screamed as soon as I stepped on the other side of the garden. It was actually a real live alien with green slimy shoes and green slimy body with pink spots. It had a white face and it was around five to six years old. The alien looked very worried. Hello! I said, I am Anna. Suddenly, the alien jumped with fright. She said, No, 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 quick, hoi, tish. I didn't understand this language because this was an alien language. I said, I don't know an alien language. Then she finally said in English, Hello, Anna. I was amazed. First, she was talking in an alien language. Now, suddenly, she was talking in English. This was very surprising to me. Just as I was thinking about what I should do next, the alien said, Do you have a toolbox? Yes, I said. Why do you need a toolbox? I asked. Zub, 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 the alien said again. What I'm trying to tell you is that I need a toolbox to repair my spaceship, said the alien. Then, suddenly, a whining noise came. Oh, no, no, mammy, me. Then, the noise became louder and it was a loud crying sound. I thought that this alien must be the elder sister and the crying baby must be her baby brother. I told alien, you take care of your baby brother and I will get the toolbox. 
With that, I ran inside and searched for the toolbox. Finally, I found it in my dad's cupboard in the attic. I started to run back down the stairs. When I came back to the spaceship, the baby alien had gone back to sleep. Sister alien said, Thank you. What is your name? I asked the alien. She said, Koisui, it means the Kora sister. Do you need any help? I asked. Zuba, zuba, zup, zup, the alien replied. I took that as a yes. Alien needs help. What help do you need? I asked. Zup, zup, zap, 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 zup. Zap, zap, zoop, zap, zap, zoop, zoop, zap, zoop, zap, said Alien. Then she replied in English, I want a cream and something to eat. I went up the stairs calling, Mom, Mom, Dad, Dad, there is an alien in our backyard and she said she needs my help. Mom and Dad were quite bewildered and shocked to see an alien in the backyard. Then I said to my dad, Do we have a spare crib? Uh, yes, said Dad. We have it in the attic. I will build it right now. That will be very good for my little brother so that he can sleep nicely, said the alien. I and Arav took them inside and took them to the room which Mom had now arranged. The alien felt relieved. Soon, Dad got the creep and the baby slept in the creep peacefully. Then, I took out my gigantic universe map. I showed it to the alien so that she could tell me where she has come from. She pointed to Jupiter's moon and said that she had come from here. How do we get to this moon? How do we get to this moon? How do we get to this moon? I sang and I was checking the map. Aha, this is the way, but now how do we get you there? I said. Then, suddenly, Arav got an idea. I know, we can use the steering wheel from my toy car to make a balloon ride back to the moon. We can put a small motor which we can attach to the steering wheel to make the balloon go to the moon. Yay! Cool assist! Cheered! Now I can go back home! Then... We filled up some balloons and my alien friends got ready to fly back home. Zap, zap, zuba! Zap, zap, zuba! The alien thanked all of us as she took her little brother in the spaceship. She told us that her little brother's name is Little Moon. We said goodbye to the Little Moon and cool assists as they flew away. Phew! That was a great adventure, I said, feeling happy that we helped our friends to get back home. Now, who wants to eat some cake, said Mummy. Me, 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 we all shouted and raced to the kitchen. <laughs> Litter Adventure, we would love to hear from you. Visit www.litteradventure.com I hope you enjoyed this book. We had so many interesting stories, didn't we? Don't forget, be good for mummy and daddy. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.